If you are a farmer, a gardener, a homesteader, whatever the case may be, fireflies can be a hugely beneficial ally. Fireflies can be immensely helpful to a lot of plants, uh, especially some native plants on the landscape, and they also have a very important part to play in natural pest control. However, a lot of these fireflies are in danger, and if we lose fireflies, we lose a cornerstone of the ecosystem. So first off, fireflies go by a bunch of names, right? We've got well, fireflies, glowworms, and lightning bugs, right? Those are among the most common. And so these fireflies comprise of many different species around the globe. But these fireflies can be very effective pollinators in their adult stages, and they can be very effective insect predators in their larval stages, right? And so when we talk about natural pest control, a lot of this is gonna be very similar to uh, the benefits that soldier beetles can bring, right? Because the lightning bugs and the soldier beetles are closely related cousins. So the fireflies can go after slugs, snails, earthworms, and cutworms. So we might think right off the bat that going after earthworms might be a bad thing, but in some cases, especially here in North America, we do have certain species of earthworms that are not native and are invasive and can actually be uh, degrading the habitat of a lot of natural landscapes, especially in like forested areas. And always, in general, it's a good rule of thumb to always seek to maintain that balance, right? Too much of a good thing, like too many earthworms, can sometimes become a bad thing. When we talk about attractants, right, what is going to attract the lightning bugs to the landscape? And what is going to provide them with habitat and shelter so that they can thrive in the ecosystem. So lightning bugs more often than not like to be near a water source, right? Even in drier areas, they might take up residence near a pond or some body of water. Now, if your backyard doesn't have a stream or it doesn't have a pond or anything like that, there are some workarounds that we can employ on a small scale that can provide the lightning bugs with the water that they need, right? We can always use the terracotta bottoms to pots setting up a terracotta pot bottom like this, filling it with water and put, putting some stones in there. It can be really beneficial for lightning bugs, right? If, if it's dry, especially if we have some droughty conditions, this can be a source of hydration for uh, these lightning bugs. And so I put the rocks in there so if the lightning bugs get stuck in the water, they can kind of fish themselves out right and kind of dry out and then crawl out and fly away so this can be helpful especially if you don't have a pond or some body of water um, near where you live of course this water can be dumped out and refreshed each day uh, to prevent breeding mosquitoes right we can also work to have more plants on the landscape more coverage right like what's behind me so we can see here this is an area right by the garden uh, and we've got, like I said, a bunch of sumac and some devil's walking stick and some other um, plant life here as well, right? And so this will help to provide a bit of a canopy up top uh, and then also like an understory. Um, and this will help to kind of provide a shady environment and also help to keep more moisture uh, and dampness down in the soil. And it can also help to cut down on, uh, you know, any wind. Uh, that might be blowing through right so this provides a little bit more of a sheltered habitat right we also have some dead and decaying wood in the understory kind of hard to see from here and then down here we have the wood chips and wine caps of course and that helps to add a lot more organic matter into the system as well right so this can help to provide good habitat uh, sense of safety sense of shelter for these fireflies also indirectly boosting the organic matter content of soil, adding in a bunch of leaves, adding in some compost, right? And so all these different methods can work uh, to build organic matter in the soil. And when you build organic matter in the soil, you enhance the soil's ability to take in water, like a sponge, and hold that water in there. And that's very important for firefly larvae. They're gonna be uh, in the soil or at, at the soil uh, surface level, right? And they need those damp environments. To, to really thrive. Also having some plant cover in general can help to uh, harvest the morning dew, right? Early in the morning, 
so these fireflies can have access to water droplets that can help to keep them hydrated. We also have light shields. Plants with larger leaves, especially during the day, during the heat of the day, you will see these lightning bugs oftentimes hiding in taller grasses or underneath the leaves of, of plants. So here we have uh, eggplant. So these have larger leaves and oftentimes during the middle of the day I can find lightning bugs hanging out on the undersides of these leaves, right? These eggplant leaves, these are kind of slightly fuzzy. They are large and they're pretty thick leaves, right? So they give uh, help to give the fireflies a little bit of protection during the day, right? These leaves, these eggplants aren't super tall. They're not tiny plants. They are a nice uh, kind of a low growth, large leaved plant that can uh, really make fireflies feel more at home in the landscape and give them that protection from the sun during the daytime. We have some grass clipping mulch in this garden bed. Uh, and so this really helps a lot to help hold the moisture down into the soil, protect that subterranean environment from the outside air, right? So this can be beneficial for uh, the lightning bugs, not only in terms of conserving moisture in the soil, it also helps to add in organic matter uh, as it continues to break down, boosting the soil's ability to hold more water, helps to decompact the soil as well. Light shields during the day, those are important, but also during the night. And it's really important because especially taking into account all this light pollution that we have, it can get harder for the lightning bugs to find each other. So we want to have uh, some canopy in certain areas, right? Maybe around the perimeter of the garden or around the property, you know, that can help to block out outside light from neighboring houses, from automobile traffic, things like that. And even um, on a home scale, you know, if you are one who usually leaves your porch light on outside or you have outside lighting or even lights inside the house can also leak outside of the windows. So maybe if you must have these lights on during a certain time, maybe put them on a t timer so that they can eventually be turned off. Or if you think about it and you come to a conclusion that you don't really need to have those lights on, then by all means just turn them off, you know? Also maybe if your schedule does force you to have lights on, you know, in the house, maybe investing in some heavier curtains uh, that can help to keep that light in. Next, we also have flowering plants. So the adult lightning bugs are pollinators of a lot of different plants, right? And so especially having native plants on the landscape, particularly native plants that produce a good amount of nectar, it can be very beneficial for the fireflies who eat some of the nectar. And then it can also be very beneficial for the plants who get pollinated. So we have different native flowers. So we have foxglove, which is actually not a native plant to North America, but it can be a good pollinator plant for different fireflies. So of course, use your best judgment if foxglove is invasive in your area, might be a good idea to not plant that and focus on planting other uh, plants that are native. A lot of plants in the aster family, right, that are native can be very uh, beneficial. So we have plants like goldenrod that are in the aster family that can be very beneficial for these lightning bugs. And then we also have plants in the legume family, right, like uh, the American wisteria. And then also old logs, right, dead decaying wood can be really good for fireflies because a lot of this wood, especially in air shady areas, can hold moisture and it can help to provide habitat for these fireflies. A lot of different conifers can also be very beneficial, you know, especially like some of the, uh, the native pines to North America. They can also uh, provide a sense of shelter for these insects as well. And then of course, like I said earlier about holding that moisture in the soil, uh, we want to support um, that process as much as possible. And one fantastic way we can do this is to leave the leaves, right? When the leaves fall off the trees in the fall, they will rest on the ground. And especially in, uh, you know, at least in certain areas, if we can keep those leaves where they are on the ground um, and, and they will naturally help to form a, a, a suppressive layer, a natural mulch, like a thermal barrier as well. Uh, from the outside environment uh, and they can help to provide a good habitat for fireflies, uh, especially the developing larvae from the fall to the springtime. So we've talked about the benefits, why the lightning bugs are so good 
to, for the environment, for the ecosystem. We've also talked about some of the attractants, like what will bring these fireflies into the environment and support their livelihood in that environment so they can stay there. Now we're gonna move into some of the threats, right? And a lot of these threats are super substantial and it really takes a community, a big community, to really make these changes happen. But it starts with the individual, right? Individual change uh, helps to create community change. So we can start off with habitat loss. So we can talk about the uh, deforestation, the loss of some of these trees, you know, like the, um, the pines and some of the other evergreens. Also the spread of certain invasive species or even take lawn grass, right? It's basically a man-made invasive species. Humans make that grass invasive. Tillage, um, when we talk about agriculture, may also cause issues when it turns under the soil, exposing the lower layers uh, to the outside air. And so we lose organic matter and with that we lose soil moisture and it becomes a tougher habitat for these lightning bugs to survive in, especially in their larval stages. Then we also have the light pollution, which can also tie in with habitat loss, right? Lightning bugs need dark areas uh, in their habitat to be able to find each other, to be able to mate. But we have a lot of light pollution, especially in these uh, developed nations. Whether it's people staying up late at night or people going to bed with porch lights on, or we have the street lights, right? Traffic lights from vehicles. Light from all these different sources contribute to the confusion of these fireflies. Then we also have the pesticides, which can really have negative effects on these lightning bugs, right? Especially when we talk about the broad spectrum insecticides. The pesticides that target the insect's nervous system, right? We're talking about the neonicotinoids or the neonics. We can also throw into the mix the carbamates and the organophosphates. And these will not only directly harm or uh, in many cases kill these lightning bugs, but they can also indirectly fight against these lightning bugs by taking away a lot of their food sources of certain other insects um, as well. On that same note of chemical pesticides, when we talk about the mosquito control, right? Something that's not commonly talked about, but widely done. We're not talking about just agricultural fields, but other areas where uh, humans may inhabit the area or places where there is a high risk area for mosquitoes. But a lot of these chemicals can have substantial negative impacts on a lot of other insect species as well, including definitely not limited to these lightning bugs. Also, drought conditions can contribute to uh, the loss of um, firefly habitat and the loss of firefly populations. As I've said earlier in the video, these fireflies need moisture. They need damp environments, right, at various stages of growth. Drought, whether it be from mismanagement of the landscape, like, uh, you know, desertification or other vagaries of the weather or climate, these can pose huge issues for fireflies. In certain areas, if a drought gets bad enough, uh, then we can have wildfires and those will only further work to extirpate these um, fireflies from the landscape basically cooking the surface level of uh, some a lot of these soils all right so thank you so much for checking out this video on fireflies right now we know a little bit more about them we know their benefits their attributes that they can bring to an ecosystem we know some basic ideas of what can attract these fireflies um, into the ecosystem and what they might need for their habitat. And we also know some of the risk factors that can be damaging to firefly populations. And so taking all this information and putting it together, we can come up with a plan to help protect fireflies in our local areas. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.